Hey guys, I'd like to share with you a Sony phone that's came on my radar recently. It is the Sony Xperia XC2 Ultra. I think this is a very, very good concept. It's got 23 megapixels in the back. It's got a 16 megapixel and 8 megapixel camera at the front. Now, I think it's a very good concept. I like the idea of this. I like the idea of a mid-range phone with a top-end cameras on the front and the back. But, in my opinion, they have priced it too high. Here in the UK, where this has just been released, they are pricing it at £349. And if you look at, you know, other shops, I know the official website sometimes is expensive. Even in other shops there, like John Lewis and that there, it's the same price, £350. There is a non-ultra version. Um, this is a 6-inch phone. There is a version that's 5.2-inch. But that's a different phone altogether. But I do think that they've priced themselves out the market. And this is one of the things, it is hard to get this right. Um, I think from a pricing point of view, but Sony seem to always price their phones too high, in my opinion. They, they never seem to price their phones competitively. Um, and it's a shame because if they brought their prices down a little bit, I think more people like myself would maybe consider them. Now, the reason this came on my radar is because, radar because uh, it's on DxO Mark. They've gave it a they've gave it a review, and for a mid range phone, a score of seventy five is very good. I would say that. And you can tell it's mid-range in, in some respects just because of how kind of bulky it is at the top and bottom. But I think it's quite a nice looking phone. I think it does look good. It's a, you know, perhaps it's going to be a big phone because it's a six inch screen with big bezels at the top and bottom. But I think this is a nice looking phone. But um, if you look at the pros and all that down the bottom, pros and cons, it's got a 75 for photo, 74 for video, um, Significant loss of detail across the frame. For video, it's saying autofocus, not responsive and low light. I looked at someone's sample from the, the selfie video, like a sample from the front cameras, 16 and 8 megapixels at the front, and it looked good. In comparison to other mid-range phones, it looks like one of the best options out there. But in comparison to like flagships from last year, which can now be bought cheaper than this phone, it didn't hold up too well. And this is reflected in the DxO marking system as well, um, the DxO mark system. If you go down here, you can see here, 75. The PlayStation is a little bit higher than an iPhone 6. So take, obviously, you have to take a lot of these scores with a pinch of salt because things change over time. But you could buy a flagship from last year for around the same price. Or you could even pick up the Nokia 8 for about 300 in the UK. And those cameras are much, much better. So... Yes, this is, in theory, a mid-range phone because if you look at the specs here, um, it's got a 1080p screen. It's got, I mean, it's pretty good, 4 gig of RAM, but it's got a Snapdragon 630, which is a mid-range processor. It's got a lot of things I like, like micro SD slot. It's got a headphone jack. It's got Type-C. So there is a lot of things to like. I don't believe it's got waterproofing, but that's not an issue for me. Um, I do think this is a great phone, in theory. It really is the price. It's the price that I think um, you know, kind of puts me puts me off. I know I know these things are selling points. You can do like a super wide selfie at 120 degrees. That is a great selling point. But if those 120 degrees photos look worse than they would in another phone with a smaller angle, uh, a smaller range, then I don't know. It's it's kind of pointless in many ways. Um. As I said, I think it's too expensive. Here it's got an e-global, uh, e-global, if I can talk, <laughs> e-global central UK. Uh, thank you for choosing. Okay, now this is an import. So this would be imported. I believe they're based Hong Kong. I might be wrong there. So if you are wanting to import it from China or something, then that changes the story. That really does change the story, in my opinion. At that price, this is a, a more attractive option, I would say. I definitely think for a for a brand like Sony to get at that price is a much more attractive option. But the price that it's selling at of the UK just now, £350, even with the headphones, I think that's very, very expensive because for that price, you can get well, you can get a OnePlus 6 uh, for like £100 more, but you can also get phones from last year, other flagships from last year. Um, and more recently, we saw the one, uh, the Mi Mix 2S, which was around the same price if you ordered from China. So I realize I'm comparing a Chinese phone from a, a, a brand phone like Sony that's been released directly in the UK with a UK warranty and all that kind of thing. But I do think that they have priced this quite highly. The cameras do look okay, 
but they're not going to replace the cameras on a flagship phone. And you can buy phones like the Nokia 8 cheaper than this. So it makes you wonder why would you buy this? I do like this concept though, guys. I've talked about it before. I do like the idea of a mid-range phone with a high-end uh, camera. But high-end cameras and good quality photos and videos seem to go hand-in-hand hand with a fast processor. It's just the, the nature of things, you know. And as Snapdragon release a new processor every year and all these other um, CPU companies, when they release a new CPU, it can handle 4K at 30 frames per second or 60 or whatever. And every year they're pushing that boundary. But when you use a, a, a kind of lower mid-range CPU, you are kind of limited as to what you can do. So thanks for watching, guys. I thought this was an interesting phone because keep an eye on it because my opinion on this would change greatly if this price dropped. If you can find this at a cheap price, I think this would be a good phone to buy. Maybe you'll see a, a deal and a contract or something. I don't know, but... I do like this idea of having really good selfie cameras and a decent camera in the back. Um, it's a very interesting idea. And we're not seeing enough companies trying different things like this, just trying something different. We're seeing it in China, but we're not seeing it in, in like North America and Europe. So thanks for watching. I'll leave links to all these articles. You can check them out. Let me know what you think, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.